to The Town That Dreaded Sundown came out in 1976, directed by Charles B. Pierce, stars Brian Johnson, Andrew Prine, and Don Wells. This film is based on a true story, but not in the way Texas Chainsaw Massacre is, because... Texas Chainsaw was inspired by Ed Gein, real life killer, where this was inspired by the actual phantom killer of Texarkana 1946, a case that was never solved. <clears throat> this is the Shout Factory Blu-ray, which is the first time this got a home media release since VHS, and they did a pretty good job restoring it and they also included on the dvd another film by charles b pierce the evictors i haven't gotten to check it out yet but that's a nice bonus to include a second movie and for the most part i like this film other than an odd humor that clashes with the more serious nature of the film and not in a good way it's not like a Friday the 13th with the campy moments where you know that's supposed to be part of the movie. Because this is based on a true story and because of how unsettling the attack scenes are, it really clashes in a bad way. And the documentary style helps to kind of the unsettling atmosphere at times. Whenever the Phantom Killer attacks, it is unsettling even the actor with the stuff he did with his eyes the rage and hatred he projects through his eyes makes it really intense and really unsettling this is a killer that was never caught that killed five people and again i like this film the biggest negative is the humor off the bat a couple examples I can give. Well, first of all, they did change some names and circumstances, like they invented a kill for the movie where he ties a wire, takes a pocket knife, and ties it to a victim's trombone with wire and plays it to stab her to death, which never happened. There was a musical instrument involved in that case, but it was missing and found under a bush that fall it was never used in the killing because it's believed the killer meant to pawn it but decided against it because it would be too hot of an item and they changed some names like the real life texas ranger uh lone wolf gonzalez is lone wolf morales which is an interesting thing too because these murders happened in texarkana a town that sat on both the Arkansas and Texas border. A lot of different law enforcement agencies were brought into this. Police on both sides of the border, the sheriff, Texas Ranger, state police, FBI. I believe in total there were like nine different law enforcement organizations working on this case. Now, as far as the humor, one of the best examples is a character that I don't like is a character called Sparkplug, who is it is just played for laughs. He gets assigned to be Lone Wolf Morales' driver, and he's kind of a bumbling, clumsy type deputy, can't find the key when it's hanging on the wall, starts speeding, has to get a lecture about it. He even volunteers for a real-life attempt to bust the killer where they had certain sheriffs, certain officers dress as women <coughs> and other ones dress as men and park at Lover's Lane and the scene is played to me. Yeah, there could be a couple chuckles there, but it was played too much for laughs. And... It's kind of distracting because at the same part, the whole night ends with another brutal attack and killing, and it's the trombone one, and that it really clashes badly. That, and there's a scene where the main character 
comes across the car while killings are in process, and even though this is meant to be at nighttime, it's so clear when you look around you, this scene was shot at the day, and it's really super distracting. Even though I like the cinematography, I'm going to have to put that part in a negative because, again, it's just so distracting. But the cinematography is, even then, is on point. There's not a moment where the cinematography in this film is bad. It has, a, like I said, a great documentary style. It's shot on great angles. But I'm not going to talk too much about the plot because if you haven't seen this movie... I want you to see it and experience it. One of the best scenes involves Don Wells, who played Marion on Gilligan's Island. It was the one home attack in the whole case, and because of that, even though the majority believe, yes, it was the Phantom Killer, there is a little bit of debate as to whether the Phantom did this or not, because the killings did stop after this. The person Don Wells portrays does get away. He kills her husband with the twenty-two, shoots her, and even though they she didn't crawl through a cornfield in real life, we get this really intense scene where she's crawling through the cornfield trying to get the safety and the phantoms hunting her. She finally gets to a neighbor's in the phantom at another distracting point. Most of the time, the eye holes are small like this. But from this one scene and the last scene, you get really big eye holes. And it is kind of distracting. But this woman did actually live and go on to remarry again. So there is a happy ending there in that. But that scene's great. And another thing I like is how the Phantom Killer portrays Rage. He's breathing real heavy and you see the sack head moving as he's breathing and another thing i like about this film i love films that are about peaceful towns gripped by fear because something horrible happens and this portrays it really well i love the part when the narrator talks about how after the second attack on the first day after the second attack every gun store was sold out on the second day locksmiths were flooded with calls for dead bolts and chain locks and it shows how this really did affect the town and it mentions how at daytime texarkana looked normal but everyone dreaded sundown deep down everyone secretly wondered were they or someone they know next and it captures that great the final scene, which is a chase with the main character in Lone Wolf Morales, was made up for the film. And it kind of feels, and I get it, you wanted something more thrilling for your finale, and I enjoy it, but it does almost feel out of place. They chase, they see the killer who's walking around in broad daylight, even with the sack head. And... I guess he was scoping out that area to kill his next victims that night, but he runs across a railroad track and there's this unintentionally funny scene where he's running in slow motion and gets shot in the leg and ripes out and runs into a swamp. Again, I could say spoiler alert, but given the fact that this killer was never caught, you know this isn't exactly going to end in the best of ways and it shows the killer hiding out in the swamp evading the dogs and the final shot is my favorite because it says if you ask the people of Texarkana they say he still walks among us and the last shot is again a shot of feet only limping this time I really enjoyed this movie and I recommend it but because of how badly the humor clashes, as much as I would love to give this film an A, and as much as I want to, I'm going to have to give it a B, and in fact, I'm being generous by not giving it a B-. minus. So, The Town That Dreaded Sundown, I highly recommend it. 
I believe it's even free to watch on YouTube, so you don't necessarily have to buy it like I did, but I do like to have a physical copy to hold when I'm doing the reviews, so don't forget to like, share, comment, subscribe, and join me next time for a mystery review over and out.